and the award for best actor goes to Ofer Grace. Son of a bitch. Everbrock Jr. played by Topher Grace, commonly known as one of the most divisive Spider-Man villains in cinematic history. You either love what Sam and Co. brought to the film, or you fucking hate it like the second coming of Satan. Now this video, it's not gonna be one-sided, oh I love Topher Grace and Eddie and Venom, he's the best character in the whole goddamn film. Although I absolutely love what Sam Raimi and Topher Grace brought to the screen, this is gonna be an objective video essay. You know what else I love? Today's sponsor, Raid Shit. Fuck that shit, bitch! No, 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 no. Nah, I'd love to thank Sword Clash 117 for giving me some help throughout collecting several images, videos, comic panels, and many more ideas. I'll be the only one talking, but think of this video as a collaboration with him. Also, if you like Spider Man 3 yourself, you might also like to help out our campaign SM3 Deleted Scenes. I made a video discussing this, so if you haven't seen it, check it out. You can sign our petition in the description if you want to as well. Does it also hurt to ask for a like as well, please? Without further ado, let's begin. One more thing, enjoy the Halloween special. To organize this analysis, I collected data involving his name, hobbies and interests, personality, role, relationships, major conflicts, and overall change. Name. His name is Edward Brock Jr. This version bears the same name as Eddie in the Ultimate Comics, that being Edward Brock Jr. Hobbies and Interests. He's a freelance photographer for the Daily Bugle. Just like the 616 universe, Eddie is introduced as being a photographer slash journalist. However, unlike 616, he's fired for being a hack, like the 90s series in which he fakes a photograph to score a job from Jameson. How does that sound, Tiger? His romantic interest is the blonde beauty, Gwen Stacy, although she has no romantic interest in him. Personality Eddie is a trashy suck-up, a kiss-ass if you will, willing to fake a photograph to achieve first place. He's introduced in the story as dating Gwen and works at the Bugle, despite being a freelancer. He's snide, rude, has no real morals, and even acts childish in certain scenarios. Here in this scene, you can see Eddie act like a kid you see in Walmart who didn't get the toy he begged for. And in this scene, his reaction is not unlike a father scolding his son for a crappy report card, a clear indication he takes no responsibility for his actions. The cherry on top is his behavior in the church scene, in which we hear Eddie confess his true internal feelings. The novelization's monologue is significantly longer, and he's presented as a demented stalker, following Peter to his apartment, taking notice of $7 in a drawer, a photograph of a stunning redhead, and his pathetic red and blue suit. This goes one step further into the deleted breakup scene with Gwen and Eddie, in which Eddie appears at Gwen's house, almost assaults her, and is eventually handled by Captain Stacy. There is a short video depicting this on Sony's stock footage website. Once again, we see Eddie acting childishly. I believe this was inspired by this scene in Ultimate Comics, where Gwen turns down Eddie's romantic advances because of the age difference. That's nasty. Roll. He's Peter Parker's main antagonist. I consider Harry and Flint secondary antagonists because they're motivated by someone else, like Harry being motivated by Norman and Flint by his daughter. Where Eddie is motivated by his pure hate for Peter, he's the dark mirror to Peter to display what Peter should not, cannot, and will not be. Relationships. His relationships are Gwen's boyfriend, Parker's rival, MJ's captor, Harry's murderer, Jameson's employee, and life's punching bag. It's wizard time, motherfucker! Fireball! Major conflicts. Challenged with the job position, he ends up illegally cutting corners that leads to his downfall. He's then cut off by his love interest, leaving him in a lonely place for the symbiote to help him. This eventually leads to his death, where he's unable to forgive Peter and rather die with the symbiote. 
overall change. Begins as a scummy photographer and slowly loses grip on sanity, pushing him to kidnapping and murder. His overall change is in the wrong direction, growing increasingly violent and vengeful. This is a huge departure from the 616 comics, letting him live on to help Spider-Man defeat Carnage, and even later down the road becoming the lethal protectors. Eddie may be the character to receive most amounts of backlash presented on this film. I'll let you in on a secret. Have you noticed that every villain in this trilogy is from the Ditko era of Spider-Man comics, where Venom is the only outlier created by McFarlane in 1988? That's right, the reason he doesn't feel like he belongs in this film is due to his extended history in the comics. The Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Sandman, and even Harry Osborn as the Green Goblin are all from 1960s and 70s comics, when these characters were introduced as one-off villains to expand Spider-Man's world, usually appearing once, then possibly returning later down the road. Eddie Brock was introduced as a cameo in Web of Spider-Man number 18 in 1986, officially debuting as Venom in Amazing Spider-Man number 300 in 1988, giving him two years to develop. That's what I love about Grace's Venom. Raimi took a character that he was not familiar with nor attached to, turning him into a character he could fully tackle, injecting his own style. My interpretation is that Raimi turned Venom into a Ditko era villain, rather than a late 80s McFarlane villain. Venom wasn't the only one who got the Raimi treatment. Introduced in Amazing Spider-Man number 4 of 1963, that's also why people love Sandman here. He was a regular criminal given sand powers in the comics turned into a struggling father desperate to save his daughter, accidentally killing someone along the line, which turned out to be Spider-Man's uncle. So it doesn't add up why people would only take issue with Flint being Uncle Ben's killer and nothing else, compared to everyone hating everything about Eddie. It just doesn't make sense to me. This was strictly an Eddie Brock video, not a Venom video. I mentioned the alternate Venom death a tad in my previous discussion video, but once again, that's a topic for another day. Maybe Christmas. But who knows? I make my videos and I don't even know. But one thing I do know is that if you made it this far, you finished watching my Eddie Brock Analysis Halloween special. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Remember to sign the petition in the description below. And if you're enjoying the content you see on my channel and want to see more quality material, please consider subscribing. Well, my job here is done tonight. Happy Halloween, everyone. Get drunk off that candy you got and pass out happy. Good night, everybody.